And Brown. Yes, sir. What's your date of birth, Tony? 9-26-86. What's a good phone number for you? 970-402-7798. Is that a business work? Personal. Business sell? Well, I kind of got them both on one, but okay. I do have a other work phone, but I don't use it. It doesn't charge in a year. <laughs> okay. It's just easier That's, for me to carry one yeah, phone than no two. What's, uh, what's your home address? Uh, 1924 Sunset Circle Milliken M I L I M I L L I K E N K E N Colorado What's your zip there? 80543 Okay All right so as you probably learned yeah. We've been talking to everybody who was who had, who had known Chris and worked yeah. with Chris and and whatnot. So, um, what, do you remember when you first met Chris? Yeah, um, I've been here. I started here two years ago, August eighth was my start date, mm -hmm. and, uh, and that was sixteen. Yeah, okay. I didn't meet him. Oh, I met him. That was a shame. That was okay. someone else. Um, I was my first day. We had a conference upstairs. I didn't meet him that day, but the second day. He actually trained me for the day because I was replacing, I can't remember his name, someone Patterson. He was leaving to a new group, so Chris took me under his wing and trained me that day. So that'd be August 9th. That was the first time I met him. Okay. So you know, he was working here already. Yeah, he'd been okay. here before me. So was he your direct supervisor? No, we were, the way they had it broken down was there's operators. So you know, the foreman, the field coordinator, and operators, and he was just an operator at the time. Okay. And I was just replacing another operator, so we would have been on the same level. Gotcha. But he just had more seniority. Okay. So what was he training you to do? Um, operate facilities. I didn't know the route or my area, so he would take me around and show me this is your location, this is your location, this is your location, and then he would show me how to gauge tanks because we have a uh, list it's on OneNote of every route, and IOC puts down comments, hey, go check this location for this reason. Or this reason. So we'd go through one note together and he'd be like, all right, looks like we need to gauge this tank, color cut it, see how much water's in there. So we'd go over there and he'd be like, looks like we need to equalize this well. So let's drive over there and equalize it. And he would just show me the routine day to day stuff um, on my route. Whatever Jeff and Nancy had posted in one note to look at. Okay. So he, he knew how to gauge tanks and he yeah. was training you how to do that. Yeah, he knew everything. And, and just so I'm clear, gauging tanks means. Um, you just check the fluid height. Usually if it's at um, 9, 5 to 10 foot, it's getting ready for a load. So you just go ahead and you get on top of the tank and you have your gauge reel. It shows you like measurements okay. and you put like a color cut and you send it down to the bottom of the tank and you determine how much water is on there. And you don't want to send more than 10% water to the haulers. So if you gauge it at a foot and like, oh, there's a foot water, then you go on the back side and drain the water off. Okay. So we gauge tanks and color cut them. See how much water and then drain them. Okay. All right. Do you remember about how long he trained you for? That one day. That was it. <laughs> yeah, I okay. kind of got thrown in the mix pretty fast. Yeah, really. Had you had experience in the oil field before? Um, I'd worked with Roustabout, but it's a totally different ballpark from Roustabout to operating. So I was with, I can't remember that guy's name, something Patterson, that one day, but then he moved on the next day. Like they moved him quick. So I was with Chris for one day, and then the next day I was with Tony Kern, and then I was on my own. So I was only with Chris for one day. He went back to his own route. Okay. And where, where was your route? Um, the numbers change so often. Like, I think it was, we were the E's, East, East Tens. And it was pretty much the county roads of 41 and 22, all the way up to county roads 28 and 39. And then on 41, all the way to 49. It was like a 16 square mile radius. 41 to 49? Yeah. Okay. And then from 22 to 28. That's when I first started. Okay. But we've shifted around quite a bit. You said 16 square miles? Pretty much, yeah. How many um, sites were on there, do you remember? At the time, I think I had maybe 200. And then they kind of divvied up. 
Like, like this guy has too much, this guy doesn't have enough, so mm. then they'll rearrange, rework the okay. routes. And you were E10, you think? Uh, I think, I'm pretty sure I was E14, because the group was E10, so it'd be 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 7, I think. Okay. They've changed so many times. Right. Well, yeah. now we're the 40s, before we were the yeah, 30s. And, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, how much interaction uh, did you have with Chris? Um, from when you guys first met till recently, a few weeks ago. Um, when I first started, just that second day, and he didn't really talk to me for the first probably like six or six months or so, because we would just come in. You look at your computer for an hour, maybe mm -hmm. one thing. Oh, oh you go ahead. You guys mind if I hang and work here? Um, we're kind of in the middle of an interview I'm with uh, law enforcement, so I'm so sorry. Shane Frost. Hi there, Greg Zetter with CDI. Uh, this if, is my uh, crap. Can I just yeah? There's this you open do what you need to do. Out? We'll hang out. And... I'm so sorry. Nope, no problem. We kind of put it in on your territory here. So. Okay. <laughs> I squatted on this. For yeah, that's right. Because I got going, so. <laughs> the problem with technology is you get so damn strung out. That, <laughs> yeah, I know. You know? I have to carry two phones. So if somebody so else important. pokes his head in a gentleman with white hair, just tell him I'm going back down to Ken's office. Okay? Ken's office. Ken's okay. office. Yeah, yeah. We'll do that. And I will get out of here, guys. This year. No problem. Sorry again. That's no problem. Thanks. See you, Dave. Have a good one. Sir. You too. <clears throat> Pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. <clears throat> Uh, so, where, where were we? How long did I interact? How much did I interact with them? Yeah. Um, so you said the first six months. So probably like, yeah, the first six months. Much. We didn't really talk a lot. I was okay. a new guy. and Because we'd come into the office, you check your computer work, you check your tanks and stuff because your connection's better here. Like, check the fluid levels and you check the wells, see what's running, trying to plan out your day. And then you just head out to the field and we're by ourselves until it's time to go home. Mm -hmm. So, probably like the first six months. And then... So you didn't inter interact with that just a function of your, your job? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we kind of just... You come and talk with some people you know for a little bit, but then you're out on your own. Yeah. And then <clears throat> probably last summer is when we kind of started talking more often. Okay. Um, Was there a reason for that? Well, we had the incident with the house, Anadarko did. Mm -hmm. So we shut in explosion. all of our wells. Yeah. Yes, sir. So then they had a... They pretty much just put a stop work and... Our team would have more meetings and more meetings because they were changing our day-to-day -day operations. Like, all right, we're going to check this now and check this procedure and this for safety. So we would see each other more, and we'd be in the office a little bit more as a team. And uh, we would just talk a little bit more because there wasn't a lot for us to do except for wait for instructions and then go out and check stuff for the NTO process. Right. What was your guys' interactions like? Um, pretty... We would just hang out. He was mostly a quiet guy, but when we did talk, it was mostly about family or sports. He was big into sports. Um, we would talk about, like, DraftKings and did you see this on the Rockies game or did you see that player get hurt or mostly like that. But we did talk about family a little bit here and there. Mm -hmm. What did he tell you about his family? Um, he, when we did talk about his family, it was mostly about his kids. Okay. He did because I have one son, and we would compare, hey, does your kid do this, or does your kid act this way, or stuff like that. Okay. Did he <laughs> tell you about his kids much? Uh, I want to say maybe just a handful of times when we did talk about family. Though. Okay. One of the kids. I remember what the kids' names were? I know there was Celeste and Belle. Um, he would, I, I honestly don't remember which one was which. I don't remember who was the older one, who was the young one, but he would always say, one of them was a fireball. She was always had a lot of energy, and that one was pretty calm. Um, and I was, because my son has a lot of energy too, and we kind of compare. What do you do when they're going wild, or how do you settle them down, or just like day to day stuff like that? But um, with nothing too, like, what's the word? Like, really, really detailed about them, like stuff like that. Okay. Um, you ever, did you ever mention uh, Shanann? The only time he did is when he was trying to pitch me on Thrive because last August we were doing a weight loss competition at work. A bunch of us guys, mm -hmm. and, hey, 20 bucks, 
for three months. Let's see if we can lose the most percentage. And he's like, I'm not doing that. I can't lose any more weight than I already have. And I didn't know he was a heavier set guy early. And that's what Troy told me. But he's like, yeah. He's like, well, if you want energy, I'll sell you Thrive. And I was like, nah, that's a pyramid scheme. And he's like, it's not a pyramid scheme. I was like, well, how do you make money? He was like, well, I sell to you, and then you sell you to sell someone else. Much. I'm like, okay, it sounds like a pyramid scheme amount. That's right. But he's like, yeah, well, my wife, she's pretty high up there, and she, you know, like, she got a free car, and she kind of like incentives for me to join with them. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's not for me. I don't go door to door, and I can't pitch people and stuff I don't even use. <laughs> but that's the only time you really talk to me. Um, we were Facebook friends, and every almost every day I would see like five or six posts of Shanann, like on, Thrive. On his Facebook? Yeah, or his hers? Facebook. Well, I'm not friends with her, her, Okay. but on his feed, it would be her updates of her trying to sell Thrive okay. and promote it, and like, I did the laundry today, got the kids back to school, lunch made, clean the house, did like everything she'd been doing for the day, and just, I would get like six, five or six feeds a day through his, and I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm like, after like five months of this, I'm like, okay, Drew, I'm gonna have to hide your post because my, all my wall is just you and your wife and Thrive. And I was like, I have to hide it. But that's the only time I never met her in person. I would just see her and I'd watch her videos of her and the girls when she posts videos. But he didn't talk about her a whole lot outside of a couple times he mentioned Thrive. Okay. <clears throat> uh, let's see. You guys ever hang out after work? No. Go on the weekends? Go we try. Go to the ball game, anything like that? No. Um, we try. We would have a routine, me and Troy McCoy and Cody. Uh, we would try and get poker nights every other weekend, and we'd always invite him. And I'm like, you invite Chris? Because we're always looking for, like, regulars. Mm -hmm. We want to get a regular game going, you know, guy time. And we'd always invite Chris, and he said he was going to come a few times, but he never would. So then we just stopped asking him. Like, all right, he's not going to come. So yeah. we just stopped asking him. But Troy would always say he was busy, he couldn't get out of the house. And even on time when his wife was away on trips, like, hey, invite Chris, maybe he'll come. And everyone would, would hang out. But was she away on trips frequently? Uh, I don't know. I know it was. It seemed like almost every other month she was doing something for Thrive, whether it was conventions or something, going away, promoting, and seemed like she, they were going on a lot of trips. Her. Her and him or just her? Usually? Just her. Because he was, he was a guy that didn't miss work. And if he did, it was because his daughters were sick. Or it was something with watching the, you know, watching the kids. Mm -hmm. But I only remember him being gone just recently on a trip. Because we went, I went on vacation the exact same, August 1st, August 8th. And he was gone the exact same time. Do you know where he went? I think North Carolina. Because I made a joke, because Chris was one of the smartest guys in the group, and everyone kind of leaned on him, and Troy makes that comment too, like, I'm one of the hardest workers, and he's like, when are you going to be gone? I'm like, August 1st or the 8th, and I was like, looked at the calendar in Luke's office, and I was like, you guys are going to have a hard time, because me and Chris are going the exact same days, I'm like, good luck guys, so that's the only time I remember him taking a trip, but other than that, I know he'd leave early because his daughters were sick, or they did have a lot of health problems. I remember that through the years. You were saying what those health problems were? Um, Luke, my foreman, had said in the past, but I couldn't remember. There was a time where they were really sick, and everyone in the group pitched in 20 bucks to get the girls like pillows, or like chair pillows, that chairs that turn into animals or something like mm -hmm. that. Like, it was pretty bad at one point, but they were having health issues, I knew that. When was the last time you actually saw Chris? That Wednesday, we came back on the same day. I came back August. Can I look at the calendar? Because I remember I came I back to was... work that Wednesday. So, I, yeah, I was off August 1st because I went to Florida <clears throat> and I came back the night of the 7th. And he came back. We both came back Wednesday, August 8th. So, yeah, August 8th was a Wednesday. Yeah, I saw him that morning and then he was off. I think the next Thursday and Friday, I think because he was taking Shanann to the airport. And that was the last I saw him. That was it. 
Um, I know he was at work that next Monday. That's when everything went down. And I was going to go out to that location, but I have a new guy, Frank, with me. And I was like, Frank, we don't need to go out there because there's going to be five or six people. Like, there's no point having almost the whole group out there. So I was like, let's not even go over there. So I would have seen him that morning, but I didn't go. Yeah. That was Serbi 319, is yeah. that right? That was eight thirteen. That was so, so you were gonna 13. you were gonna go. Yeah, because why why were you gonna go out there? My uh, new role. I'm a rover in the group. They just because people have been moved on to different groups and they kind of got to fill positions. And myself and Robert Mary are rovers, so we don't have a set route that we need to attend to. So we kind of just go where need be. And I didn't have anything going on that morning. And I was like, well, I can go help. Because it's a pumping unit out there, and I don't have a lot of pumping unit experience. So I was like, yeah, I'll go out there and watch you guys fire it up, and I'll see the steps and stuff. But then, like, well, can we have Frank right along with you? I was like, yeah, Frank can come with me. So then I was like, well, Frank, we're not going to go way out there. Um, there's going to be too many bodies. Okay. So Frank and I, we just found other stuff to do. So who all was out there that you're aware of? That I'm aware of? I know Chris is out there. Um, I knew it's Cody's location. Cody was going, and Troy, he's one of our pumping unit experts, Troy McCoy. And I know um, Cody was going to go. He's, he's temporarily out of the group learning automation, cross-training. So they were going to have Melissa run his route for him, which she's doing right now, and Chad was taking Melissa out there. So Chad, Melissa, Cody, um, Chris, and Troy. Those are the five that I know that are out there. Okay. I told Frank. And, and why was everybody going to 319? Why was everybody? Because they were starting a pumping unit up for the first time. And Chad was our field coordinator at the time, so he needed to be there. Um, Troy's our pumping unit expert. He can troubleshoot anything. It was Cody's route, and Melissa was getting ready to take over Cody's route while he cross trained in automation. Okay. So we had somebody running it. Okay. Did you know of any problems with, uh, with 319? No. I just knew from, I knew that they were going out there because there was a leak on one of the lines. I think it was a line at the tank, a uh, dump line. One of the dump lines was leaking. So that's, that's the only problem I knew. But I've only been out there one time, and I honestly couldn't tell you how to get out there. If I just went out there myself, I would get lost. <laughs> right. I know kind of like the Rogan exit, and then you go east, and then you go under a bridge. But once you go under that bridge, that's where I'm. I'm just driving and guessing how to get to those wells. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Did Chris ever mention to you he was having problems with uh, his marriage or anything like that? No. Chris never talked to me about his marriage a whole lot. Um, I only really called Chris to ask questions about wells. Um, that dude had a memory. Like an elephant. I mean, any problem. I'd be like, I'd call him, like, hey, I'm going to go unload this well. And what do you think? And he'd be like, what are the pressures? And I'm like, it's like 900 over 900. He's like, nope, it's too low of pressures. I need to be at this. Or I'd be like, hey, I'm going to go at this facility. What's wrong? Why isn't it running? He's like, oh, holding the coils happened two and a half years ago. Like, he could remember every detail of every location. He's, it was crazy. So he was the go to guy if I didn't know what was going on. Or be like, how do I get here? And he would have the exact directions just memorized. So he was pretty smart in that. But he, um, no, he didn't really talk about Shanann and her other issues. He did make one comment to me um, when we were at the Arrowhead Farms. That's a location. Getting it ready to run. And it was just me and him. And I kind of, after all this happened, you know, sometimes someone says something to you. And you don't think anything of it. It's kind of like a joke. And then something else happens, and you're like, wait a second. Mm -hmm. And you kind of backdate to that conversation. He did say something to me one time, and I kind of back. I was like, what the hell? Um, we were getting ready to get this facility up and running. And it was just me and him. And that morning at the office, Troy was like, congratulations, man. As Chris walked in, and no one knew what they were talking about. And then Chris was just like waving his hand, like three. Like, yeah, three. And we're like, what? And like Chris, or he's like, we're having another baby. And we're like, oh, congratulations. 
And that was the same day we went out to the field together. And I was like, hey, man, congrats again on your baby. And he was like, yeah, thanks. And he didn't really show any emotion. And he's like, you and your wife going to have another kid. And I was honest. I was like, I don't know, man. I don't think we can. And I told him, like, we've had some troubles trying to get pregnant again. And I don't think it's in our cards. And he was like, well, do you want one? He just made, like, a straight up like that. Well, do you want one? implying that I can have one of his and I was like well yeah I guess if it's a girl because we have a boy my wife wants a girl and he's like well, I'll let you know and like that was like I thought he was joking you know because I told him we, we've had three or four miscarriages in a row we can't get pregnant anymore and I was like sure like jokingly but that was kind of a weird comment he made now that I, all this has happened thinking back to it gets me a little emotional yeah you remember about when that was? Oh, maybe two months ago, two and a half. I mean, I could honestly, I could find out because we were turning on, we were following this Tim's crew around, getting it ready, and a Tim's is like tank emissions management system, um, per state requirements. So we were getting all these locations ready, and we went to the Paragon and we went to the Arrowhead Farms that same day. Where is Arrowhead Farms? Arrowhead Farms is off County Road. Hold on, let me think. If you go down County Road 22, you're going 22, which is east, and then you go down 31 and 20. So 31 and 20, you're going to go east, maybe a mile and a half, and it's south into. Okay. It's a single tank, single set location three wells and then the paragon we were there the same day that's off 37 and maybe 18 37 18 south a half east into but we were going to these locations in the rail getting them ready for this crew to come in and work on them and he made that comment and i didn't think anything of it until all this happened i was like well shit that yeah, kind of sheds a new light on it yeah it did and it kind of stuck at home yeah, I'm me sure. and my wife do have issues with that. Yeah, no, I can see how that'll be. That's kind of sticks in your head. I can see how that yeah. would. Did, was there any more conversation about his kid at that mm, point? At that point? No, I don't really remember any, anything else after that. But I just remember that comedy made. And I was just joking. Is there, it's a girl. My wife wants a girl. But the rest of it, I don't really, I think it was just, back to work but I didn't want to be rude and not say congratulations you know yeah right it's a big deal but other than that it was mostly football sports talk and fantasy football talk and just random BS and you know yeah. small conversations Did you ever talk about going to the Rockies games or Brock game or anything like that uh, I know he was. He would only talk about it if the Steelers were coming to town because he's a big Steelers fan. He was diehard Steelers, so anytime anything happened to the Steelers, we'd give him crap because we're all Broncos fans and he was a Steelers fan. But I know that he would go to those games. And as far as going to the games, no, as Rockies, no. But he followed the sports every team because I'd be like, "Hey, you see what happened to Arenado with that fight he got into?" And he knew everything. It's like you. Watch sports in every day. Kept up with every topic. Because there would be a lot of times where he would just address me with that. Hey, did you see this happen in football? I'm like, yeah, I saw that. That's crazy. And stuff like that. <clears throat> so he recently lost a lot of weight. Yeah. Is our understanding. Um, did you ever talk about that? What was up with that? He what never, he was doing? He, I didn't know him when he was a heavier set. Because he was pretty fit when I came over here. He was pretty slim. But I know he would just go running every morning. He told me he'd run like five miles every morning before... Uh, well, now that you may say that, there is another thing he said. He would just say he'd go running five miles in the morning. But he did make a comment one time that him and Shanann would get in fights. Or he, she was, she was getting ready to go on a trip. 
and he wanted to work out. And she was like, "This, I want you to spend time with me and not go running and working out. And uh, he's, this must have been before they went to North Carolina then. Because he was like, yeah, now that Shanann's gone, I can start working out again. And I was like, oh, you guys, she won't let you work out? And he's like, no, she's getting mad because I wouldn't spend time with her. And I just wanted to run in the morning. And he's like, now I can get run without getting in trouble. He didn't make that comment. That's the same day as the baby talk. The, so the same day? Okay. The same day as uh, Arrowhead Farms. Now that you say that, he did say that. He's like, I can finally exercise without getting in trouble. But, yeah, I know he would go running in the mornings and before work. And, but he would always eat healthy. He's always a healthy eater. Because we would we have monthly tailgate meetings. We usually go to Ben's Pizza. It's over in Hudson. Ben Luke will buy everyone their own personal pizza. And that was the only time I'd ever see him eat junk food. Other than that, he would always eat healthy. Yeah. So, But he never, I didn't know when he was a heavier set guy. And he would jug water like crazy. He would drink like two gallons, three gallons of water a day. I've never seen someone drink that much water. <laughs> um, let's see. Do you know him to use any drugs or alcohol? Nope. You ever talk about drinking or anything like that? Nope. Never talk about drinking or drugs. Water and Thrive, that's all I heard about him drinking. Water and Thrive. So, and protein. Is, is there like a protein shake or mix or whatever they have they for have Thrive? They have all kinds of different Thrive supplements. They're different flavors and shakes because I'd be like, what's the flavor this month? And he'd be like, coffee or whatever. And uh. it's all like you mix it in protein. That's all he would take. But as far as alcohol, I don't, I don't know. Okay. No drugs, marijuana, anything like that you're aware of? No. Nope. Do you guys get tested for marijuana? Randoms. Um, last, like, four months or so, they would have meetings, and they would just shut the door, and whoever's in there, it's randoms. And if you had any, is like point zero point zero zero one on you, you're gone. Fired. Yeah. There's zero tolerance here. They're just trying to clean up, you know. Yeah. But, um, no, no, I think... I don't know if he ever got tested. I know I didn't get in any of those meetings or tested. I don't know anyone that got fired. I know people that got fired, but I don't know them. But. <clears throat> so Monday the 13th, you were going to go to 3-3-19, but you didn't. Yes. And um, the rest of the day, did your path happen across with Chris at all? No, it did not. Um, nope. That was probably been Tuesday. Cause I had no clue. Because uh, I was in Luke's office. Luke was at his desk. Chad was sitting there. And I was just standing there talking to Luke about some stuff. And I don't remember what I was talking about. But Chad called Chris. And I heard Chris talking to Chad on the phone. And he's like, oh, I'm, I was already headed out to 319. And I was like, dang, that's freaking early. I was like, why is he going out there so early? Because he would always come into the office every day. So it's Monday morning? Yeah. So, so let me. I heard him on the phone talking to Chad about already being out there. So Monday morning, <laughs> you're here. Remember mm -hmm. about what time you got here? I I'm usually at the office around six ten. Okay. That's usually my get in, walk in the door time. And so you're in the back. I'm in Luke's office. Yeah, down the hall talking. So this is probably when I heard him on the phone. And who's he talking to on the phone? Chad. Is that Chad McNeil? Chad McNeil. Luke doesn't usually get here till 6.30. And I don't go and talk to Luke right away. Because if he doesn't have his energy drink, <laughs> you don't want to go talk to Luke that early. Sounds like maybe he needs a Thrive drink. <laughs> He's got a NOS in his hand every morning. Really? And if he just sits down at his desk and anyone goes in there right away, it's like, what, what the hell do you want? Let me <laughs> sit down for a second. So it's probably like 6.45, 6, maybe 7, when yeah. I was in the office, when in Luke's office talking to him, and I heard him on the phone. So, so Chad's on the phone with Chris, Yeah. and Chris says he's already at 319? Yeah, he was already out in the field. 
That's what he said. I'm out in the field because okay. I didn't know what location they were at at the time. So he's out in the field. And uh, Chad was calling him to see if he had the cannon cables. And those are cables you hook up to your truck. You could hook up to the pumping unit and jump start it. And he would see if he had them. And he said no. And he's like, I think Tony has them. Tony Curran. And Who that initiated that phone call? Do you know? I think Chad. But I'm not sure. Because okay. I know they were looking for the cannon cables. To start up the pumping unit, to jump start it. Okay. And I remember saying, no, I don't have them. I think Tony has them, Tony Kern. And that was about all I remember from that phone call. Okay. But you knew that Chris was out in the field already. I knew he was in the field. And it, but that's unusual for him to be out there? Very. Early. It was very unusual. Yeah. He's always in the office. He's usually like a 6.15 to 6.30 guy. He's in the office sitting next to us. Because there's usually always... Myself and Tim. Well, Tim. Well, maybe it wasn't Tim. It's usually myself and someone else sitting in there, and then Chris is usually the third person to walk in. And I'm like, "Yo, what's up?" And then he fills up his jug and sits down and does looks through wells and stuff. But yeah, Chris was always the third one in the group to sit down in that room with us. Yeah. Okay. Do you remember any other day since you've been with this group that he was that he went straight to the field? Never. Cause he'd never do that. And we used to have this one guy in our group that would always say he's straight in the field every morning because we have a group me app. That's how we keep track of where everyone is just by, you can't GPS them, but they communicate. And he would always say, in the field, and we'd always laugh like he's not in the field. And he was the only guy that ever do that. I'm like, he's still at home. But Chris would never go straight to the field. Okay. And I don't think that morning he even put it in there because I was like, where's Chris? And they're like, oh, he's in the field. That's weird. He's the operator, is that right? Chris? Chris, I'm um, sorry, he's a field of field. Uh, what'd you he say? He would be a field coordinator field now coordinator. because Tony got moved over. He's now foreman and Chris and Troy stepped up. Because at the time, Chad went to Texas to help yeah. out. So Troy and Chad, Troy and Chris, excuse me, were acting field coordinators, and myself and Robbie went to Rovers. Okay. So do field coordinators generally? go out to fix wells, fix mines? Um, yeah, I know that Chris had pretty good mechanical knowledge. But. Sometimes. I mean, if they did, they were with the operator. Like, if there was ever a problem, if, before it was Tony and Chad, they would always say, hey, let's go together. Let's go fix this. So they get a person, the operator can see what's going on. But usually not just straight out to the field unless it was serious. Like, hey, this needs to be done by 7 a.m. because the rig's moving on or someone's going to be working over there. We need to get someone out there right now, but usually not. And But with as things being as slow as they were, like we're not turning on new facilities right now, there's not a whole lot going on. So to keep busy, some of us go out earlier than others. And, but no, it's not like a field coordinator to do that. A rover, yeah, but usually not field coordinators. Okay. <clears throat> So is that a field coordinator's job to go out and? Um, I wouldn't say it's necessarily his job, but it's more of the operator's job to go fix that stuff. If the operator doesn't know how to do it or doesn't feel comfortable, then he can have whoever, another rover or a field coordinator. Field coordinator is pretty much just to watch over the field mm -hmm. and will help, help out where they're needed, but to make sure people are doing their jobs. Okay. And then the rovers are the freelancers. They so it's like operators at the bottom, and they call the rovers first to come help them out, and then they call the oper the coordinators to help out, and then up the list, depending on severity of things. <clears throat> what is the first time you hear about something being wrong with Chris's family? As far as as far as Shanann and the girls missing They're missing um so not that Monday because I didn't see Chris and then Tuesday on the group me Luke sent out a message saying Chris will not be in today and that I didn't even question it because sometimes something comes up you know and I didn't know what was going on and Troy and I and Troy and myself went to a location to turn it on. 
to do a PSSR pre-safety startup review on it. And we were waiting on Chad to show up because Chad wanted to be there to go through the paperwork. And we were just sitting on location and I heard, I was walking over to Troy's truck and he was in his truck on the phone and I heard him talking to somebody and I heard part of his conversation and I was like, oh, I heard him say missing. And I was like, oh, I'm just going to walk away, you know, I don't want to be rude and stand there while someone's on the phone. And I walked back in my truck and then he hung up and got out and I walked back over there and I didn't ask him what his phone call's about. Just stand there and he's like, I just want to be honest with you. Excuse me. He's like, this is just between you and me because Troy has been known to have a mouth and tell stuff he's not supposed to. <laughs> like Luke tells him something or Chad, he always tells me. He's like, don't tell. Because I'm like, I can't tell you anything. He's like, just between you and me, Tracy's family's missing. I'm like, what? And like, my heart sank. I was like, what? He's like, yeah, he can't find them. So that's when I found out. It was like maybe 8 o'clock on that Tuesday. And where were you guys at? We were at the Roland, R-O-L-A-N-D, slash Arndt location, Roland slash Arndt, 28-4. And then I was like, dude, I was starting to freak out and panic. I was like, I don't even want to work today now. And he's like, it's going to hit the news. He's like, he's, Chris said they're going to interview him for the news here pretty soon. And he's, well, who's on the, I go, well, who's on the phone then? He goes, that was Tim. Tim saw it on Facebook. Like a post came up. And I had been on Facebook for like six or seven months. I just got off of it. I was just aimlessly scrolling, wasting my time. And me and my wife got off of it. I was like, no shit. So then I was like, I got back on the Facebook and started reposting it I'm like hey please help find my friend's family you know which I feel like an idiot for and then I ended up deleting Facebook again once I found out the news because I didn't want to have any backlash because I was saying yeah he's a really good guy I work with him please help pass this on you know but it was that Tuesday it's probably like 8 in the morning 8 8 30 Did uh, you and Troy talk about it? Yeah, we talked about it. And he said, between you and me, he like, Chris and Shanann have been having some issues. I was like, really? I was like, I never would have suspected that. He's like, no, but he said, Chris has been sleeping on the couch a lot. And Chris has told him that they were having some issues, but nothing serious, because Troy offered. He's like, if you want me to come to my house, place to stay, that's fine. He's like, no, it's not that bad, just arguing. And Troy's like, well, Chris said that she took her wedding ring off and left it on the counter. And I was like, oh shit. So we started speculating, you know. Yeah, that's what we speculating about. We was like, well, like, well, she took her, got so mad at him and took her ring off the counter. Maybe she just fucking left. Sorry for my language. No, you're good. Maybe she took off. And I was like, maybe, well, she was in North Carolina for, I don't know how long she was gone. For that time because i know she was by herself out there for a short period and i think he went a little bit later something like that i was like maybe she was planning on leaving him i was like maybe she met somebody on her thrive trip because she would go on thrive trips so often i was like good possibility she met somebody on her thrive trip she came back home and he was going to work and she took off and troy was like well that's the thing they can't they have looked at the cameras on you know the doorbell and the neighbors and they didn't see nothing I was like, oh, that's a clean getaway, man. That she probably slipped out the back. And he's like, well, look, they didn't take any clothes or anything. He's like, not even the medicine. And I was like, well, she's been planning this this whole time. Maybe she's been stashing money, you know. Well, that's what we got from her leaving the wedding ring on the counter. And he's like, it's a $10,000 wedding ring. So Troy said, but I don't know. I never, I never saw it. But he, so I was like, best case scenario, she left him. Took the girls and left him. But that's all that we could speculate on because we never saw that coming from him. Never. Not. I would have put anything on it said I haven't seen one ounce of violence in that guy. He's always calm. He's cool, collected, super smart. I've never seen him get angry. I was like, something happened and maybe she left. 
<clears throat> that's when I started sharing it on Facebook. Please help find my friend. And, and then when you see his interview, and we had a meeting with the group before we knew what everything was down. And we're like, everyone in the group said, we watched his interview, and they're like, that's Chris. That's just Chris. He's always calm. He doesn't show any emotion. If he laughs, he barely laughs, like a little snicker, you know. But we're like, we thought that was a nervous laugh. Like, because he's not a big people person. If he doesn't know you, he really doesn't talk to you. Unless over time, he slowly starts to, you know, let you in. But when he made that little laugh on the camera, I'm like, that's just a nervous laugh. I didn't think anything of it. But, you know. Never would have guessed that was going to be the result. What about this part is upsetting you so much? I think it's the daughters. In my head, I visualize everything. <clears throat> That's okay. Take your time. I have a son, and he's five. I mean, he's a little guy. And I couldn't imagine doing that to someone. And when I see, I picture in my head, because I know Chris, I thought I'd do him. Just the image of him hurting those girls. And him putting them in those tanks. Two girls so innocent. So it hurts me. And no one over the last like four years, my wife and I, we've lost three, I can't even count, but it's three or four miscarriages. We can't get to eight weeks. And there's people out there that would, you know, do anything to have a kid, another kid, and they can't. And then someone does something like this. Just take their kid's life. Sorry, it's no. Yeah, it's I thought it was over this. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> the, when it happened, the, the news broke. I was at home with my wife, just playing video games, and my mother-in-law texts me. She goes, "He admitted to it." And I freaked out. I was trying to open every news channel, and I was in wreck. I was crying because I couldn't believe it. And then the next day, all I did was cry, and they sent the whole group home Thursday and Friday. They said, you paid, go home. And the, over the week, the first few days were the hardest, and over the week, like, I stopped. Like, I thought I purged all this crying out of me. I've been following the articles and learning new details because it's so close to home. Just because I knew him, I hung, talked to him almost every day after he knew me and we worked together. And just the fact, to think of him shoving his daughters in that thief patch that it's like that big. I don't even know the damper of it, but it's just that hurts me. You know, and people the first day were attacking him on Facebook, and I was getting so angry. I'm like, he didn't do it. He didn't do it. You guys don't know him. And then when it came out, it's like my emotions are split. I don't know how to handle it. And I thought I'd gotten over it. Uh, it's, it's incomprehensible, that's for sure. And last night I saw the video, again, of the Shanann telling the girls they were pregnant and the daughters were hugging their belly and almost started crying again. It's just the daughters. Mm -hmm. That's what hurts the most, I think. I didn't know Shanann. I never met her. I just saw the video. She seemed like a nice person, but I feel bad for her and the family. Just the whole daughters and everything, it really gets me. Five year old and whatever their ages were. It's not fair. Okay, think I'm, think I'm back. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so when you're out on the, I forget what you call the site. Art. The Rowan Art? Yeah. With Troy? Yeah. So you're out there and, and you start hearing the news. Yeah. And um, 
do you, do you guys work the entire day? Does, uh, does somebody call you and talk uh, to you about it? Or? Well, we we were talking, and then Daniel showed up, and I didn't say a word to Daniel because Troy said between you and me, this is what's going on. Daniel who's, showed who's up. Daniel? Daniel Barr. It's, he's an operator. It was his location that we were turning on, trying to get turned on, but there were some locks on there from someone else, and there was a piece piece of equipment that needed to be installed. So we ended up not even be able to do anything on that location. And then Chad showed up, and he didn't say anything about it. Obviously, he knew because um, I guess those guys knew from yesterday. Why? Because Chris went home that day, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, actually, I was with Troy the remainder of the day. I couldn't even tell you what other locations we went to because I couldn't get it off my mind. I've heard missing, and I was trying to follow the news, checking the news every 30 minutes an hour to see if there was a missing person. So I was Googling missing persons, Colorado, you know, trying to find anything I could on it to try and help spread the word, help my friend find his family. Mm -hmm. I don't remember how most of the rest of the day. Okay. But I know I was with Troy. I think Troy mentioned that you guys went to a training at a pneumatic facility. Down south of Hudson, southeast of Hudson. Does that sound right? Um, we that's the same day we we went to the eighteen Acatero State eighteen thirty six to help Melissa was out there. What are we doing there? Um, I don't, I also don't remember, but I know we did have a training in that time frame. A t I think it was a Tim's type deal. Honestly, I can't remember. Yeah. Can't remember most of that rest of that day. Cause I remember keep checking my phone, checking my phone. I remember trying to post it, finding things, spread it. <clears throat> and so, so let's see, that would have been Tuesday. So Tuesday after work, um, what do you do? Um, Tuesday, just go home. Okay. I, just go, I don't do a whole lot. Were you on Facebook some more? On I was. I was scrolling on Facebook. Um, yeah, I was looking. I think by the time I got home, it was already on Facebook. A couple of Shanann's friends posted pictures of her and said, hey, please help find my friend. And I was sharing that post, sharing that, you know, and then... My friends and family were sharing it because I said, help my friend. And watching the news, and then the new, that same night, I think the news came out of his interview saying, look, help, you know, I want him to come back and home. And I was just trying to follow it, follow it, follow it. Did you talk to your wife at all about it? Yeah. What did she say? My wife didn't know Chris at all. She knew of him because I talked to her, you know, about all the guys I worked with. And I was just like, hey, you know. Just try and you know, watch out for the news. I mean, keep me updated if you see anything. And I was telling her same thing I did with Troy. I was like, this maybe this happened or this happened. I was like, I don't know what's going on. I was like, Chris did not do it. And she watched that interview and she she didn't believe what she was saying. She's like, I saw him laugh and smile, and she's like, that seems fishy. And I was like, no, that's just him. He's just an awkward person. He doesn't like talking to new people, let alone the country, the news, the state. I can't remember, was it Wednesday night that they broke the news he confessed? I, I think it was Wednesday night. Yeah, it was like 10 o'clock, so. Wednesday night, and that's when I was, I didn't even go to bed until like 5 in the morning because I was crying and couldn't sleep. And we came in Thursday for a meeting with Ken and the whole group, and they brought a counselor in to help, help talk about it. Then they sent us home. Well, Ken actually escorted us. He got us to ride home because he's like, I don't want you guys driving. That was pretty tough. But my wife and I, we would just keep, she was, she sent a new article. She sent it to me. She's like, did you see this? And did you see that? But she never knew him. She never met him. She only knew of him because of Thrive. I was like, he's trying to get me on Thrive, Pyramid Scheme, and that's all. But. Okay. <clears throat> 
You didn't. You didn't have any contact with Chris on when or Tuesday at all. No, you I didn't text him or call him or anything like no. that. No, you know what? I was gonna call him because I there was something wrong with the location, and I was like, I don't know, but I know who knows the answer. And I was talking to Luke with him, like, I know Chris knows the answer, and Luke's like, you know what? Why don't you give him a call? Maybe he would like to, you know, talk about something else, get his mind off things. And I was like, I don't feel comfortable calling him. And yeah, that well's not running, big deal. My family's missing. I'm like, that's what I, in my head, that's what I thought he was going through. I'm like, I don't want to bug him at all. He's got way more important shit going on than what's at work. So I didn't call him or I didn't even text him. Okay. I, I wanted to, but I didn't. I just, I don't know how to handle that stuff, you know. I could have said I'm sorry, you know, but I just, I didn't want to bother him. Mm. Okay. Um, what truck did he drive? He drove the... Banana Darko truck, uh, Ford. Is that an F two fifty? I think it's a one fifty. I'm not sure. To be honest, what color was? Uh, it was like a brown, dark, um, dark brown. Okay. And they all have GPS, right? Now. Yeah, okay. they all have their GPS geo site, which it tracks everything. It tracks how fast you're going. If you're talking on your Bluetooth while you're driving, anytime you're talking on your Bluetooth, it tracks it or location and. Seatbelts on and all of that stuff. That, that stuff gets reviewed pretty closely, right? As far as I know, yeah. I'm not an APC employee, so I don't know how the ins and outs of that system. My company uses a different one, Cardosite, so it's not as in depth as the GeoTab, GeoSite. But I'm pretty, yeah, they get graded on it monthly because I know Luke will get records. They get graded like, oh, you got an A plus. You didn't have any hard brakes or speeding or stuff like that. Um, sure. But if I if I took my truck and I went somewhere at I don't know eleven thirty at night, yeah. that's going to show up and they're probably going to get talked to about yeah. it. Yeah, so they'll it'll send them. Whoever's monitoring it, I don't know, but someone's always keeping tabs on that stuff where you're going. Yeah. Okay. So something unusual like that is probably going to prompt an inquiry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can't take your work trucks anywhere, really, if you're not working, because someone's monitoring it. Yes. <clears throat> um, do you know what other vehicles they had? I know they had a Lexus, just because Shanine got it for Thrive. They gave her one, because she was so good, high up in sales and hitting her quotas and stuff, but... I, that's the only other vehicle I know they had. And I think that was the only vehicle they had. Because at one point I asked Chris, I'm like, do you have a truck or anything? He's like, oh, there's no point. We have the one vehicle. That's what I think, if I remember correctly, this has been over a year ago. And he's like, no, we just have the one. There's no point in me needing one. But I know they were looking into getting a Tesla. Because I guess he was hitting his goals for Thrive, but... I know he didn't even sell the Thrive. Shanann was selling her portion, and she was selling his as him. Okay. So he was getting points, too, and they were looking at another Lexus or a Tesla. He's like, yeah, I'm on pace to get either one of these vehicles for free. So I don't I don't think he ever got it because I never heard anything else about it. But. Okay. Do you remember him, they were talking about any other vehicles they had? No. Just that white Lexus. Nope. All right. Anything we haven't talked about that you think we should? I don't think so. I mean, I saw the, the new report of him might have an affair with another man. None of that ever. That surprised me. I was like, when just when you think the story's getting wind down, something new pops up. None of us suspected that. I mean, as long as we're going down that road, do you know? So he allegedly had a girlfriend who worked here. I think I'd seen them. You think you'd seen them? Do you know when that was? 
Um, this there would be this girl. And I think, you know her name? I think it was Nikki. I think her name was Nikki. Um, a brun uh, brunette. She had a pretty good body. So, the guys, when we sit in this common area, I don't know if you've been through this building or not. No. If you go down the hall, there's a little common area. There's like three little white squared tables. That's where our group sits. Usually all the groups sit together throughout the building. And she would always walk by, and I would see him, like, he would always be on his laptop, and when she would walk by, he'd, like, look up a little bit and stare at him the whole time. And I didn't think anything of it, because she, she was a fit girl. I'm like, okay, well, she is attractive. But I did see them talking differently down the hall. Because there's a um, northwest entrance to the building. When you walk in, there's a little monitor TV screen, and it says oil prices. They're up. Kind of like, up 2% down, you know, mm -hmm. little updates. And I did see him talking to her um, in the hall. And they were with it, like, pretty close. Like, I don't know, like, too close to my bubble. Like, closer than you and I are right now. They were talking... I didn't think anything of it, because right where they were, if you just go east a little bit, there's a gas monitor room, and that was what she did. She would, would make sure the gas monitors were calibrating and take care of that room. I was like, oh, maybe he's just talking about the gas monitor. But when they said he was having an affair with the girl at work, I'm like, there's only two females in this office I've seen him talk to, and one of them is impossible. is isn't Nancy. She works in the OCC, but she works with all of our group. I'm like, that's off the, out of the question. And I'm like, I've seen him talk to her, and I see him staring at her every time she walks by. And the guys that say it, they know she's attractive. And she's like, and she knows she knows she's attractive, so she's trying to get attention. <laughs> right. Because the fridge is in there, and she'd put her food in there. But he would always stare at her awkwardly. So when they said that there was a girlfriend or a girl involved, that was the first person that came to mind. I'm like, yeah. it's her. I know it is her. And then a couple other guys said that they knew that was her, too. And then when they said that, I went to go check, because there's a parts room you can get, and her office is right there. Her name plate was ripped off the wall, and her stuff was gone. I was like, okay. Two and two together. It's got to be her. Do you remember about when it was you saw them talking by the back door? This might have been five months ago, maybe. It wasn't within all this happening it might have been five months ago or so okay i don't know i'm like a visual person i see things and then i when something comes up i can go back and reflect i'm like oh well i did see them talking all pretty closely mm -hmm. and i was talking to some other people because you know how something happens in the office or it's going to spread like wildfire all right and i was talking to some other guys and he's like yeah i saw them talking real close and i was like yeah that's what i saw too and i was like it's got to be her, and she's gone now, so. But it was it was about five months ago or so, because she's been here a while. Four or five months ago. <clears throat> yeah. Any other time you remember seeing them? Interact? I've never seen them, other than that one time I actually talked. I've seen him, like, make eye contact, but, like, never say anything, because all the, there's, like, there's little squares, and there's four seats, and our group sits there, and he would never talk to her when everyone else is around, but I did see him all the way down the hall one time. And I just didn't um, keep walking by and I'm not going to say, hey, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. I just saw it and just kept walking and didn't think any of it. <clears throat> but I would never suspect that they were dating or anything. I honestly thought he and his wife and the family looked the perfect family. They, looked, they sounded like an ideal family. Everything was good. I didn't even know they were arguing until Troy told me. But once 2.30 hits, we usually all just check out and that's it. Like, he would make us phone calls because as a coordinator, you can't leave until all your guys are out of the field. And he would call, hey, you almost done? Because sometimes I'd be a little late and I wouldn't check out. Or they'll say, hey, how are, how's everybody doing if you don't respond? He'll call, hey, are you okay? And we'll make sure you're okay and make sure you don't need help or anything. If not, it's like, all right, you want to check out or are you almost done? Like, yeah, I'm heading out, and then they aren't heading out, so he can check out. But once checkout time, we didn't really talk. We made a text once or twice later at night, but it was like fantasy football stuff. He was going to be in our league this year because last year I didn't know he wanted to be in it. So it's the only time we talked kind of late. Okay. 
he never mentioned um, that Nikki was cute or he liked her or talked to her or had any contact he with her. He never verbally mentioned it because there would be times where we'd talk about, hey, you see that girl? She's looking pretty good. She's cute. And he would smirk. He'd like, hmm, like, you know, he never verbally like, yeah, I like her. She's hot. He never did that. So when we found out with Sarah, like, oh my goodness, this whole time, he's probably been hooking up with her, and we've just been making comments saying she's attractive and stuff like that, but never, he never confirmed anything, or he kept quiet. Yeah. <clears throat> but that was him. He was mostly a quiet guy, I mean, so you wouldn't think anything of it. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, if you can't think of anything else, uh, let me put my uh, cell phone number on this. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Off the top of my head, I mean, the only thing that really did backflash me was that old, do you want one comment? Like, do you want one? Yeah. So I, kinda, I don't know if it had any, has any weight to it or anything, you know, maybe he was joking, but. Think looking at everything now, maybe he didn't want to have that baby, and he was serious, but as serious as when he said it, because he just found out they were having a baby, so it was relatively fresh news to him. Was he was he one to joke around much? Uh, like, did he make smart little comments or anything? He like would that? make like witty like comments, but just about random things, nothing like serious. Yeah, yeah. He was smart. He would have smart quips. Like if he saw and saw something, he would make a little joke. About it. Pretty much every time he saw him, he would say, "Yo, what's up?" And then he was you know, going about business, and this, he knew he was gonna be working with you that day, and then he would talk more to you. Sometimes like, "Hey, we need you to go check this," or they need help. But yeah. All right. Well, thanks for your time. I appreciate you coming down and talking to me.